video. Choose one, wisdom, imagination. Both are valuable. Both are things we want our generation to have. But sometimes we find ourselves splitting the world into binary choices, one or the other, thinking we have to choose between being grounded or taking flight, not realizing that wisdom and imagination need each other. For imagination without wisdom can be impulsive and wisdom without imagination quickly becomes dry. So what happens when education cultivates both equally? When we follow the model of a creator who both imagined form out of void and put wisdom into words, the Stony Brook School believes that when wisdom meets imagination, it produces great vision. And the world needs great vision. Innovation is happening so quickly today that it keeps outpacing itself. And we don't always have the eyes to see whether this is good. Our values get shaped by what's expedient instead of what's true. We want to be a generation of leaders with the vision to see the difference and the character to see beyond. I'm learning to see beyond my own needs to how I can serve others. I'm learning to see beyond just taking classes to the opportunity of finding new passions. I see leadership as an opportunity to love people and to help them grow. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what job I'm going to have in the future, but I know that whatever's coming, I'm going to be confident and ready for it. I'm learning to see beyond answers to the questions behind them. I'm learning to see beyond my own culture to a bigger understanding of the world. I want to help my students to see beyond even college and to see 10 or 15 years into the future into who they can be. At Stony Brook, we're learning to bring wisdom and imagination together to create great vision. Because at the core, vision is an act of faith, requiring both wisdom to know the greatness of God and imagination to be open to his calling. Vision that puts conviction into motion and gives structure to a dream that both chases and stands ground, that develops both the skill sets and mindsets for jobs that don't exist yet. Vision that accelerates, vision that serves, so, if we ever think we have to choose just one, wisdom, imagination, we will have the vision to see beyond. Teresa, I think you're muted. Thank you. Uh, for those of you just joining us, I extend another hello and welcome to the Athletics at SBS Virtual Open House. This is the second event in our fall series. My name is Sharice Welch, and I am the Senior Associate Director of Admissions and Financial Aid. Today's program includes a presentation from my colleague, Mr. Dan Hickey, the Director of Athletics, as well as remarks from some of our wonderful students, Emily and Lily. We will also have a Q&A um, session that will just focus on athletics, followed by a brief review of our application process and then some next steps. We will also have time for a Q&A on the application process. And at that time, I will be joined by Mr. Yuri Francis, Director of Enrollment Management. I would like to review uh, a few features or expectation of expectations of today's webinar platform. All attendee cameras and microphones have been muted. We encourage you to type your questions using the Q&A button that is at the bottom of your screen. Our panelists will answer uh, as many of your questions as we have time for uh, with some moderation from um, the admissions office staff. The event is being recorded uh, and we will be able to share that um, on our website uh, in, in due time. And now we will hear more from Mr. Hickey. Thanks, Sharice. And uh, good evening, everyone who's on the call. It's wonderful to be with you, even if uh, we're not in person right now. 
I always uh, get really excited to share about my athletic program because it's something that's been a big part of my life for as long as I can remember. I actually grew up here at the school from the time I was less than a year old. Uh, my family lived on campus. My father was a teacher and a coach here for over 30 years. So uh, this is a place that really feels like home in a very true, true sense. Uh, I also attended school here for six years and I'm currently in my 14th year working at the school. The, uh, I'm in my seventh year as uh, the athletic director. So in many ways, you know, this, this is a dream job for me. I grew up idolizing Stony Brook athletes. I was a bear myself as a high school athlete. And the fact that I get to come to work every day and serve the next generation of coaches and student athletes in this program is something that it's it's really difficult to honestly put into words, but it's uh, it's it's been a true love for me, and uh, I'm really lucky that I get to do it on a daily basis. Where I wanted to start today is with a quote from our founding headmaster. On some subsequent slides, we'll talk about the many achievements and accomplishments and exciting things that are unbelievable student athletes are doing. And that's something that we're really proud of. It's always something that, that's exciting to share with prospective families because we're doing a lot of really exciting things here. But I wanna put those things in their proper context. So here's a, a quote from, from Frankie Gabeline from his work on Christian education called The Pattern of God's Truth. There's a part of that where he specifically talks about athletics and their place within the life of a school. And one piece of that, he writes, a mile race is in itself a neutral thing. The way in which a young man or woman runs it is far from neutral. Now, he specifically mentions a, mi a mile race here, but you could insert any, any facet of any sport here. Essentially, what he's saying is that whatever your sport is, whatever part of that sport you're focused on, that thing in and of itself is pretty neutral, actually. Athletics have a tremendous potential to either be positive or negative, but they are in fact neutral. And it's really up to uh, the leadership, the coaches, as well as the students that make up a team to really determine whether or not that's going to be an uplifting, potentially life-changing experience or something that unfortunately could be demoralizing or something that's a, a negative aspect of a student's life. And for those of us who have been in athletics or, or who played at the high school or college level or, or what have you, I'm sure we can conjure up images of coaches that we had that we really loved playing for. And unfortunately, maybe some coaches that we had that were difficult to play for or who perhaps robbed us of our love uh, of, of our sport or who didn't know how to get the best out of us or challenge us in the right ways. So what we really try to do here at Stony Brook is to create opportunities that will absolutely give our student athletes the best possible athletic experiences that will help them get to their personal pinnacle as well as their, their team's pinnacle as well, but never in a way that's going to rob them of their joy or their personhood or their value or their sense of self. We are going to push our athletes and push our teams and challenge them to be the best they can be because winning is not unimportant. We, we certainly care about winning, but we care about it within the proper context. And we are going to do this athletic experience in a way that's going to, to provide a vehicle for character development for our student athletes. My tennis players, my volleyball players, my basketball players, et cetera, they should all be better young people and hopefully better, better men and women as they move on from Stony Brook and go to college and beyond, they should be better people because of the athletic experiences they've had at Stony Brook and because of the men and women that they've had access to uh, every single day on the fields and the courts. Four years ago, we moved from the New York State Public School League to a private school league. And so I think that's a really natural uh, place to kind of start and look at some of the achievements and some of the accomplishments that our teams have had. For 43 years, we were in the New York State Public School League and uh, numerous sports achieved success there. But because of the size of our school and the number of sports that we offer, some 25 plus programs, 
not every sport was able to uh, achieve uh, at a sustainable level. And since moving to the private school league, we've really found that it's been an excellent fit for us competition wise. And we've come into the league and, and really been quite successful since uh, entering in the fall of 2018. So just in the last four years, our teams have earned 37 league championships, which is by far the most of any other school in our league. 300 Bears have, learned, uh, have earned uh, all league recognition. 50 individuals have won league championships. 12 of our coaches have earned coach of the year honors. We've had undefeated seasons in baseball, badminton, girls tennis, girls volleyball, boys soccer, and wrestling. And while we certainly have been strong in our league, our league also offers us access to some of the best competition in all of New York State. So when we win a championship at our league level, we gain a berth into the independent school state tournament and get to play against some of the, the very best independent schools in New York, including Poly Prep, Riverdale, Trinity, etc. Over the last four years, we've earned berths in 15 of those state championship tournaments. Now I'd love to turn it over to the starting keeper of my girls across team, Emily. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Emily Berger, as Ms. Ricky just said, and I'm a junior at the Sony Brook School this year. And this is also my second year here. A major component of my life is school and sports. And this school specifically has managed to push me and better me in every way possible on the field and in the classroom. Being a multi-sport athlete and also a balancing club sports outside of school, time management and formulating bonds with my teachers have truly taught me what it means to be a student athlete. I've always been playing sports my whole life from dance to swimming and then basketball, field hockey and soccer. The list is chaotic and truly endless. I've always been involved in sports because I love them and that is where my passion is. With that being said, athletics have built a foundation for who I am. Sports have taught me the importance of team unity, working with others and also using each other's strengths to grow and learn from your peers. And I've built so many relationships with my teammates and coaches all along the years and they have truly taught me various life lessons. One specific sport that is very special to me is lacrosse. I've played lacrosse since I was in first grade and I can never get enough of it. I play goalie and I'm one of the girls varsity lacrosse captains. This position has been such an honor as I always feel happiest when I'm with my team. From running through conditioning to jamming out on the long bus rides to Staten Island, which could be sitting in traffic for two to three hours, which is honestly the best moments. We have formed such a positive team culture that is unlike any other team that I've ever been on. And in the words of coach Vanessa Windsor, who is the head coach of the girls varsity lacrosse team here at SBS, you want to be a hype girl and more specifically be a hype girl squad. And a quick story that I want to share with you all that truly encapsulates what Stony Brook athletics is about is when our team had our first game of the season last year. It was a home game against a tough rival, which is Lou High or Long Island Lutheran. And this was my opening season and my first season being a bear. And that was very nerve wracking for me, but also very exciting. And it was such a memorable moment as I saw all of my teammates cheering each other on for passing and assists and goals, but also they re-encouraged you and reinforced you on if you had any mistakes or drops or missing ground balls, because that's what a true teammate does. And as I stood in the net, I had this beautiful realization that this is the team that I have the honor to be a part of and represent. And this team is positive through it all. And we won that game 16 to three. So, I mean, it was just an amazing memory and a great way to open up my experience as a bear. And the Stony Brook School in just two years so far has completely changed my life from friendships being made, teachers becoming mentors, and overall happy memories being formed, the SBS environment is unlike anything that you will ever imagine. Stony Brook has people from many different cultural backgrounds and everyone is so unique and special, but from this, we all learn and grow from each other academically and athletically. SBS is my happy place in the classroom and on the field, and I hope that you all get to experience it for yourselves. Thank you.
Awesome. Thanks so much, Emily. Really appreciate you. And uh, I remember that game. That was a fun game. Lou High uh, had won the last five league championships and uh, we came out and just dominated. It was awesome. So, uh, you know, again, in, in my first slide, uh, I talked about how uh, we really try to do so much more than just win. Uh, if, if my athletes graduate from here uh, and all they're left with is, is a box of trophies and some newspaper clippings and great memories, all that stuff is great. All that stuff is, is important and it matters. And it, uh, it infuses the community with excitement and uh, it validates hard work that you put in. And when you have an individual or a collective goal that you achieve, man, that's a really, really powerful thing. And so winning, winning is important to us. Uh, it certainly is. But, but the way in which we do it is very, very important as well. And there are many other things that we uh, talk about right alongside the importance of winning. Um, but to you know, continue some of the kind of success metrics that we look at as far as how our teams are doing, how they're achieving, are we giving our student athletes uh, the best experiences we can, uh, here are some other very recent uh, kind of metrics and successes from just the past couple of months uh, since we started our 100th uh, fall athletic season. So this season, uh, this past season, our teams won seven league championships, which uh, is a school record. Not bad for uh, hitting a school record in your 100th year. That, that shows you just how strong a season we had when we have uh, that amount of time behind us to look back on. Uh, this past season, we had undefeated seasons in girls volleyball, girls tennis, and boys soccer. I'd like to highlight two of our particular teams that really illustrate some of the sustained success that we're seeing in our programs. Uh, because what that shows is that, uh, you know, there are many programs out there that can have flash in the pan success where the stars kind of align and they have a great season. But the programs that have staying power, the programs that have continuity, the programs that uh, really show both corporate and individual growth are the ones that are able to achieve success over time. And it's hard to find another program uh, really in the history of our school that has been playing at a, at a higher level than our girls volleyball program over the last five years. They have now won a school record 38 straight uh, games and won their tournament title for the last three years. Uh, alongside them, our tennis team has not dropped a single match since entering the private school league four years ago. They are 18 and 0 in the league and have won three of the last uh, four titles in the tournament. This past season, 40 of our Bears achieved all league honorees and five of our student athletes were their league MVPs. Four of our coaches earned coach of the year honors. So while we certainly strive to not just be about winning, to make sure that everything we're doing on the field is infusing that time with lessons learned and character traits being built up and encouragement and fun, we also win. And I'm a firm believer that you can have a really uplifting, fun, dynamic, life-changing environment and also see results on the field. We are not about being taskmasters. We are not about tearing our kids down in order to push them to the brink of their ability. We're about building them up and letting the best come out as a result. Speaking of our amazing volleyball team, I'd like to now turn it over for a couple of minutes to Lily, who is uh, the captain of the team and just earned league MVP honors. Hi everyone, my name is Lily Keegan. I'm in 11th grade and I've been at Stony Brook since seventh grade. Um, Stony Brook Athletics has given me so many opportunities that I never imagined I would be a part of. Um, the truth is I actually didn't plan on playing sports when I first came to the school. Um, I was a dancer and I, I thought that I would continue that throughout my whole career at Stony Brook, but I ended up joining multiple sports and I am so happy that I did. Uh, the funny thing I realized uh, a couple of days ago is that I have joined a different sport every single year that I've been at the school. In seventh grade, I joined track and field. Eighth grade, I joined cross country. Ninth grade, I joined volleyball. Uh, last year, I did basketball for fun. And this year, I joined strength and conditioning. Um, as Mr. Hickey said, um, I'm currently part of the girls varsity volleyball team. I am one of the captains. 
Um, as he said, we just finished a, a fabulous season. We, we won our league championship, we went undefeated, and, and we made some history at States this year. Um, I'm also on the girls track and field team in the spring. Um, I've been on that team since seventh grade. And as I said, I'm doing strength and conditioning this winter. Um, I could go on for hours about all the games we've won and all the great memories I've made. But I think my favorite part about Stony Brook Athletics is the fact that, as you can see with me, um, at Stony Brook, you're given the opportunity to try new things. And as you mature and go through your time at SBS, you will find something that you absolutely love. And I truly believe that there is a sport for everyone. And for me, that sport was volleyball. Um, Stony Brook Athletics is so welcoming and not only can you find something you love, but you can flourish in a sport as well. Uh, I actually play outside of school volleyball now on a travel team. And if I had not gotten the training I received from SBS, I would not be playing at the national level like I do now. Um, my other favorite thing about Stony Brook Athletics is definitely the team. And when I talk about the team, I mean, not just the teammates, but the coaches. My coaches are my best friends. Um, I know that if I ever need anything, I can go sit down with my coaches and they would stay after practice or come early to practice or do anything for me because they genuinely care about every single one of their athletes. Um, they truly become not just your coach, but one of your best friends. I've had several coaches from outside of school and in school as well, but there's a difference between a Stony Brook coach and another coach because a Stony Brook coach truly makes you feel like you are part of a family. Um, there have been so many instances in which I've stayed after practice for like an hour talking to my volleyball coaches and we don't just talk about sports, uh, we talk about our lives and they're always there to support you through your highs and your lows, through your wins and your losses. Um, and your coaches care not just about your athletic career, but about you and your life as a student and a leader. Um, lastly, I will never be able to thank Stony Brook Athletics for who it has helped me become. Um, I think that sports teach you something nothing else can. Playing sports has helped me not only grow as an athlete, but as a leader and a person. I have become more confident in myself, have created lifelong friendships with my teammates, and have learned to step up as a leader. Never did I imagine when I came to Stony Brook that I would be a varsity volleyball captain, but here I am now, and I am so, so grateful that I get to lead such a wonderful team. Although I initially came to Stony Brook for academics, Athletics has become something just as important in my life and has brought me so much joy and I will forever be grateful for this. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Lily. I wanted to take just a minute uh, to just talk about what our scenario planning around COVID has looked like. I'm sure, you know, that's something that's still on many of our minds as we, you know, navigate life during this pandemic. And uh, really since the the spring of 2020 when you know covid was was still something that uh we didn't fully have our our arms around still a lot of uncertainty at that time it had only been a couple of months since we had you know kind of paused life really from that point until now we've been watching very closely lots of different uh kind of checkpoints uh and, and best practices out there provided by the national federation of high school sports the New York State Public High School Athletic Association, the CDC, the New York State Board of Health, lots of things out there that have provided guidance for us. Um, from the very beginning uh, of, of this pandemic, we've had plans for each of our sports according to those latest best practices. With our in-house uh, cleaning company, we've developed proper sanitation protocols of all of our athletic spaces. We've worked within our league to create pop, uh, proper safety protocols around practices, around interscholastic contests, and I'm really, really proud that last year we were one of only two leagues. The PSA was one of only two leagues to have three full athletic seasons. So while many of the public schools out there didn't do anything in the fall of 2020 and didn't do anything in the winter season until after the new year and then had three truncated seasons from January through June, we had a full fall season with playoffs. We had a winter season and we're able to, to get some games in. 
once uh, once the governor allowed uh, contact sports uh, or uh, contact and high risk sports, and then we had a full spring season as well, again with a with a full playoff structure. So I was really proud that our league was really able to come together and do that safely. And our goal through all of this has been to continue to provide excellent opportunities for our students while vig vigorously maintaining their safety. That is obviously very, very important. But we also firmly believe that it is really, really important to get our kids away from screens, to get them outside, to get them uh, moving around, engaging with their friends uh, in person. All of those things are so important to their physical and mental health. And we've been committed to continuing to do athletics at a high level, even in the midst of the pandemic. Just want to put up a, a graphic here for you that gives you a quick snapshot of all of the uh, athletic teams that we offer. Many of these teams also have JV programs as well. So there's really a wealth of opportunities within every season for our students to get plugged in. I'll make one addition uh, to this graphic, which I'm sorry I didn't update. We now offer rowing, uh, which is a co-ed sport in both the fall and the spring. So you'll see up there that we have a full sailing program in both the fall and the spring that sails down in Port Jeff Harbor every day. Uh, we now offer a rowing program as well, and we partnered with the Port Jeff Rowing Club uh, to do that every single day. And just this past fall, our teams had several uh, regattas in, in upstate New York here on the island. And uh, it's really exciting to be expanding our waterfront uh, footprint down there uh, in the beautiful Port Jeff Harbor. You'll also notice that there's a school activity column we recognize that not all of our students coming into school are going to fully embrace uh, the athletic requirement that we have here. So in the absence of a physical education uh, curriculum, all of our athletes will play sports. They will play on a team and all of our students will have to do at least one season of a sport. They can fulfill the second season with either another sport or with one of those uh, school activities. So we're continuing to expand those. We recognize that our students have many passions they are multifaceted, multi-talented young people and we are always looking for ways uh, to connect them with things that could unlock passions and interests of theirs we're going to uh, move into a q a session uh, pretty quickly here but these are some questions that come up pretty often so i wanted to make sure i address those and then uh, we'll certainly be happy to answer any questions that you have outside of these so i'm often asked what league we play in we play in the private schools athletic association that includes schools from Suffolk County, Nassau County, as well as New York City. So it's it's really great to be able to play a wide variety of schools um, across the metro area. We are also a member league of NYSE. So again, any sport that we win a league championship in, we gain access to the independent school state tournament and we get to play against some very, very uh, high levels of competition, which is awesome. That's what you want as an athlete and a program. I'm often asked if uh, a student can play a sport outside of school. And the answer is possibly, but more often than not, yes. If you, if your son or daughter has a passion that doesn't quite fit the sports offerings that we have, then we don't want to ask you to put that down in order to come to school here. Those, those are things that uh, oftentimes families put a tremendous amount of time and energy and resources into and you've accumulated quite a bit of skill in that regard and uh, we've created a pathway for you to continue to do that while also fulfill uh, your PE requirement here. So every year I have students who will um, do gymnastics or they will uh, they will do you know their equestrian riding or they will fence or uh, they will do karate or, or some other athletic endeavor that we don't have as a part of our program. And as long as they are doing that for five hours a week during the duration of one of our seasons, they will get credit for that. We also have students that play on some of the sports we do have like soccer and basketball, baseball, who want to continue to pursue that sport and get better by competing on a travel team or an AAU team outside of school. Again, as long as they're meeting that, that hourly requirement over the duration of the season, you can play soccer for, for the Bears and then you can play soccer in the spring for, for your AAU team and get your second PE credit that way. So there are a variety of ways for you to continue to do what you've been doing outside of school and get credit for that. 
And lastly, uh, I'm, I'm often asked if our teams make cuts. And uh, I would say many do, but, but not all of them. And we make sure that we have multiple non-cut opportunities in each season. Uh, and I will say that cutting is not, it's, it's probably the, the least favorite thing uh, a coach has to do in a season. I coached basketball here for 11 years. I hated cutting, um, but I will say that having healthy competition uh, on our teams is a good thing. Uh, it ensures sustainable success for many of our programs. And the fact that there is high interest in many of our sports, that's a good thing. Uh, but unfortunately, if a student is cut, I make sure that I meet with that student and help them figure out a good landing spot for them. Because again, there's going to be something that we can connect them to that's going to allow them to be active, to get connected, and hopefully find something they enjoy doing as well. So uh, with that, uh, would love to open it up to whatever questions you may have. Uh, my information uh, is, is up as well. So if there's a question that you feel like is maybe a little bit too specific for more of a public forum, please feel free to email me. I'd love to, to meet you, uh, you know, via email or over the phone uh, and answer any questions uh, that you have. Great. And as we give you a little bit of time to um, submit your questions, I will just go ahead and point out that we do have all of our previous virtual open house recordings uh, available on our website. Uh, and so if you would like to review them as well as participating in, in this, this series this, uh, this fall, you are um, able to locate them on the virtual campus visits page. Uh, and that will also be where we will post the recordings from this series um, as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, and now we'll turn to your questions. So um, the first question that we have um, is if we have a boys tennis team. So um, I, that came a little bit earlier in the presentation, uh, but Dan, I, you can still answer that for the benefit of everyone. Sure, absolutely. So yes, indeed, we we have uh, a boys tennis team. Tennis has been played in some form or fashion here at the school since the 1930s. So it's a sport that we have a long history in. And our boys just last year won their league championship uh, in a thrilling match, three to two over a top seeded Portland. So uh, they should be coming back strong again this year. So yes, we have a, a varsity and a JV boys tennis team. Great. Another question uh, for you, Mr. Hickey, is do the middle school students take uh, physical education during school hours? So we don't have any physical education classes during the academic day. It's honestly just, just too full. There's so many academic opportunities here. So there is a middle school uh, PE class that meets for one hour in the afternoon in the fall. And then for many of our teams, we actually uh, rely on our seventh, eighth and ninth grade students to fill out those rosters. And we have middle school students playing in some key spots uh, on a number of teams. Just as a quick example, our girls tennis team uh, won their league championship this past fall, three to two, uh, again, over Portledge. They're, they're kind of a league rival for us. And in, in, in the match that decided the overall result, uh, we had two seventh graders win the, uh, the second doubles match to give the team the championship. So for those middle schoolers that come in with uh, some experience and, and some skill in a particular sport, there are opportunities for them to get plugged in right away uh, with either our JV or varsity teams. Another question that I know our office tends to get from time to time um, is if a student would like to participate in two seasons uh, or two teams at during one season. And so how, how would you handle that question? Yeah, good question. Usually we try to shy away from that. Um, but I would say short answer is it depends. There are times where we've been able to do that successfully. It really just kind of depends on the, the two sports that a student is looking to do. But while we, we want to try to provide, uh, you know, whatever opportunities our student athletes want to get plugged into, we also want to safeguard that team experience. And if we have athletes kind of coming in and out, playing with multiple teams within a single season, sometimes it's difficult to keep that continuity. So 
short answer, I would say it, it kind of depends on what the sports are. But if, if you have a specific uh, request, I'd be happy to, to kind of think through that with you. Great. Thank you. Um, this question is, uh, good evening. I would like to know if Stony Brook provides the athletes with the gear and clothing they need to participate in the sport. So for most of our sports, we require our students to come in with their own equipment. So we're not, you know, we don't provide shin guards for soccer players and knee pads for volleyball players and that kind of thing. Um, for sports that are really equipment heavy, like lacrosse, um, where, you know, we have some new players and we don't necessarily want them to shell out $200 to get fully outfitted. I do have a lot of lacrosse equipment that I lend out every year. Um, and certainly something like a helmet, that's really, it's a really important safety feature. That's something that I, I provide every year. We make sure that they're up to code. We get them refurbished every year and cleaned every year. So uh, for most of our sports, our athletes provide their own equipment, but there are some specific instances where we, we, we do provide it um, and then take it back at the end of the year. Uh, this question, um is is it compulsory to change sports among three seasons for example play tennis during spring then choose another two different ones for winter and fall so our requirement is we want you to have a team experience in two of the three seasons so one of those needs to be an athletic sport where you're on a team and you know you're you're moving your body and you're running around every day that second team experience could be on the chess team uh, which, you know, isn't, isn't as physical, but can have many of the same components uh, as, as an athletic team as far as, you know, camaraderie and responsibility and uh, those kinds of things. Um, so you don't need to do three seasons. Many of our students do just because they, you know, they're passionate and, you know, they want to get plugged in, but you're only required to do two of the three. Can you mention some of the sports that don't make cuts and what is the general time frame for practice each day? So maybe you can answer the, um, the question, Dan, about the cuts, and then we'll have one of the students, uh, perhaps Lily, talk about practice time. Sure, frame. yeah. So uh, the, the sports that do or don't cut can sometimes fluctuate year to year, just kind of depending on uh, the interest level. But uh, our cross country and track teams are not cut sports. Uh, at times, our badminton teams have not been cut. Uh, the girls' soccer team is not a cut sport. Uh, wrestling is not a cut sport. Our uh, our girls' swim team in the fall and our boys' swim team in the winter are not cut sports. The uh, girls' strength and conditioning programs are not cut sports, although they are so popular that we reserve those spots for juniors and seniors. But once you reach that level, uh, that's a sport that you can be a part of and, and doesn't have a prerequisite skill level. Um, so, yeah, there there's a variety in each season of uh, of athletic opportunities that that don't involve um, having a tryout. Great. Um, so our school day ends at 315 and our athletics start at four. And so our practices run four to five forty five. Sometimes they'll run a little later, especially if we're like leading up to a game or something. Um, so yeah, it's four to 545. And I know that kind of sounds scary to some people at first when they hear that, but um, I think that having athletics right after school and having to work around having like such a big chunk of time with athletics and balancing it with academics is really something that um, has helped me grow as a person. And it's a skill that is really necessary in life and um, having athletics has helped me with that. Great. I'm, gonna, I'm going to direct this next question to Emily. Um, how many days a week do students go to practice? Um, so basically we have a five day schedule every single day you'll go to your practice and Coaches are extremely understanding if you need to be a few minutes late for academic reasons, if you're trying to meet with the teacher after school, or if you have a club meeting, anything like that, you just have to communicate with your coaches, but practices are five days a week, unless your coach tells you otherwise. Great. Thanks, Emily. And I would add to that, that uh, some of our varsity teams do practice on Saturdays. 
And uh, that's something that we certainly allow them to do. Our varsity teams are are trying to compete at a really high level. I will say that JV teams and any uh, middle school specific athletic opportunities, those teams will not be practicing on Saturday. We want to make sure that we're not um, having unrealistic expectations for some of our younger students. Okay, wonderful. Um, a, a question for you, uh, Dan, is do you have um, varsity swim for girls? Uh, and what is the minimum entrance level? So we do have varsity swimming. Um, what's interesting about swimming is, is when we were in the public school league, the way that they do swimming is the girls season is in the fall and the boys season is in the winter. And there's pretty hard lines around that. When we moved to the uh, private school league, we learned that most private schools, they don't really swim in the fall. If they do, it's really just some light training. Their primary season is a co-ed winter season. So what we've tried to do is, is kind of create a hybrid approach because you know we inherited that model of a girls team and a boys team and had a lot of kind of popularity around that. So we have a, a variety of swimmers here who swim year round. So while in the fall, most of the students in the pool um, are girls, there are some of our year round boy swimmers who, who swim in the fall as well. Um, and then vice versa in the winter. And then in the winter season, we have our, our main championship competitions. We have the New York state championship and we have the Easterns uh, championship down in Pennsylvania every year. As far as the minimum entrance level, my coach really enjoys having a large team and having, uh, you know, kind of a wide spectrum of ability. So what what she wants to make sure of, though, is that whoever's in the pool is able to be in the pool safely. So you don't necessarily have to come in having been a competitive swimmer or having swum at the club level. We, we certainly have students in our program who, you know, don't have that level of experience. And really, we pride ourselves on taking those students and really helping them get to a level where they are competing. Um, but we want to make sure that, you know, a swimmer is able to swim back and forth, you know, a couple of laps in the pool uh, in, in a way that's safe, you know, where we don't have to be watching them at all times. That's, that's really the minimum requirement, I would say. Okay, great. Um, so this next question, uh, Dan, is still kind of asking for clarification on the cut sports. Um, and so, uh, in particular, this person would like to know, is soccer one of the cut sports? And then are the cut sports seasonal? So, girls soccer is currently not a cut sport just because of the interest level that we've had around it. There's also a, a number of opportunities for our female student athletes in the fall, um, probably nine or ten. So, that, that also depletes the numbers. Our boys soccer team uh, has been a cut sport. The varsity uh plays at a very high level they've won their regular season league championship the last three years uh our jv team is also quite strong they they won their regular season and went to their uh tournament championship so for a boy soccer player they need to come in with soccer experience in order to make those teams okay wonderful um this question is asking about how many players are on each team and I know that that will be probably dependent upon the team. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure, if you want to answer that. Sure, yeah, it depends on the team. Um, our basketball team is probably around 12 to 14. Our soccer team is closer to 20. Uh, cross country teams are going to be around 25 or 30. Our track teams are very large, uh, probably in the you know 40, 50, sometimes 60 player range. Volleyball team is, is uh, you know, maybe about the size of a basketball team or a little bit smaller. Tennis teams, maybe about 10. So it, it kind of varies sport to sport. And it really depends on uh, how many students are likely to compete uh, in an event uh, or in a contest. We don't want to have our team so large that it's really difficult to get everyone that playing experience. So often that dictates how many students we carry on a particular team. Great. And I think this will be our final question uh, for the night. So um, the, this begins with, I think it's great. You get all students out and moving after school on sailing. Do you provide special equipment or clothing for what I assume are pretty brisk conditions in spring? 
So the sailing program, they have a, a gear requirement that families are, are required to purchase. Uh, you're absolutely right. You know, sailing, especially in the spring, because that's the more challenging season as the weather can still be quite cold out in the harbor. Uh, you know, there's wetsuits and dry suits and jackets and boots and all those kinds of things. So there, there's an added expense associated with our sailing program. Wonderful. Well, thank you um, students as well as Mr. Hickey. That will conclude our Q&A on athletics. At this time, um, I'd like to share an overview of our admissions and application process. Um, I will um, go ahead and kind of give a little bit of a disclaimer that you will find a detailed list of the steps um, and the requirements with necessary links on our website. So I do encourage you to visit that uh, if you haven't already. Um, but firstly, uh, the process really does begin with an inquiry. Um, and occasionally, you know, that's not necessarily the first, the first uh, step that, that families will actually take. They'll go directly to, to an application. Um, but we would ask for an inquiry to be completed. Then we do have an online application. Our application uh, offerings are, are, are two different um, applications, kind of uh, depending on what your family situation is. We have our own um, individual application, as well as we participate with the standard application online, also known as the SAO. Um, we will uh, conduct an interview uh, with students virtually, so it's all done online. Um, and that typically, you know, will be scheduled and, and occur after we receive the application. Uh, we do ask for admissions testing score reports and the type of testing uh, will depend on grade level. Um, uh, we also require um, English language proficiency tests. So, again, depending on your situation, um, there would be specific testing uh, reports that we would be looking to have uh, to complete the application file. Uh, we will also look for grade reports. And so commonly they come in the form of transcripts or report cards. Um, and then if you are interested in financial aid, there is an application for that. We do offer need-based financial aid uh, and we do encourage you to you know, have a look um, again on our website for those details to know uh, the application uh, to complete um, and then the time frame in, in which to get that done. As we turn our attention to next steps, uh, we want to you to um, fill in that inquiry if you haven't already. Uh, schedule a campus tour. We are fortunate to uh, be offering um, campus tours uh, in, in person. And so we, you know, if you would like to, to make use of that opportunity, we encourage you to contact our office so we can schedule that for you. Certainly, if you do have any questions or um, want to, you know, book that tour or anything of that nature, you may feel free to reach us at admissions at sbs.org, our, our email address or you can give us a, a phone call. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it if you would complete the post event survey that will be sent to you uh, because we do appreciate that feedback um, so that we can continue to improve uh, this event um, uh, for you. Follow us on social media as well. And then we also want to encourage you to um, register um, if you haven't already, but certainly join us for our next uh, virtual open house that will focus on spirituality, character, and leadership, and that will be held on December 1st. Definitely want to uh, just take this opportunity to thank you for joining us um, this for this event, um, we hope that you have enjoyed uh, all that you've, you've heard and learned and that you will come back to hear more. Um, we will now um, take a few moments to answer any questions that you might have about the application process. Uh, so go ahead and you know, place them into the Q&A box. Um, and I will uh, invite again my colleague, Mr. Francis to join me. Uh, as we answer any of those questions that you might have.
We'll give you a minute to get those questions in the Q and A. Mr. Francis, maybe you could start with maybe one or two commonly asked questions that we get. Sure. Um, I think one of the common questions that come up uh, from time to time is um, perhaps which students perhaps should take advantage of early enrollment. And so uh, the answer to that question would be that uh, if you're a student for which Stony Brook School is your first choice, um, or perhaps if we're the only school uh, that you're applying to, we encourage you to uh, take advantage of early enrollment. I think the other um, uh, the other group um, could be folks that are applying to um, either Catholic schools or um, uh, schools that have um, kind of an early round. Um, and that way, um, you're receiving a decision around the same time. Um, so, so that's, that's kind of a common question that that comes up. Great, um, there is a question that that asks, is there any provision for a virtual campus tour for parents of prospective students who are overseas? Uh, and so we do have a virtual campus tour uh, on our website uh, that you can access and, and, and do um, encourage you to go to that virtual um, campus visits page and, and that's where you will find that tour um, available there. Okay. Well, not, not too many questions this evening, which is perfectly fine for us. Certainly, if you do have any um, additional questions that you think of uh, after this event is over, um, please do reach out to our office again via email or a phone call and we are, you know, ready and, and waiting to provide you with those answers. Um, I, again, I would like to thank you for joining us and I wish you well, and we certainly look forward to keeping in touch.